All right, hello again. So we are working on problem number four from Howard Ansel's uh, Pharmaceutical Calculations book. This is from the 13th edition. And so I wanted to show this problem. There's a couple of things with this problem. It's not just that you're doing approximations um, with adding. It's the way that you read this. So first off, let's read through this problem. Um, and sorry, before I do that, I'm recording this for University of Toledo's PHPR 3010, um, fall 2021. So if a mixture of seven ingredients contains the following approximate weights, what can you validly record as the approximate total combined weights of the ingredients? And they list them out 26.83 grams, 27.3 grams, 2.752 grams, 4.04 grams, 5.197 grams, 16.64 grams, and 0 0.085 grams. So they put them all together in a mishmash together like that so that you can't actually read it. So let's rewrite this um, so that we can add these together and easily read them. And then also make sure everything is in the same unit because you don't want to be putting stuff together and adding them when they're milligrams, milliliters, all sorts of stuff, because that will happen later on. So 272.752, uh, 4.04, 5.197, and then uh, 16.64, and then 0 0.085. So when you add these all together, and I have all the decimal points lined up um, like this, is because you add, you round to the least. So actually, let me, to the least one with the least decimal point. So let me put that there. Okay. So just for the fun of it, let's point out significant figures because this whole entire thing is significant figures in this unit and rounding and estimation. So for this first one, there's four significant figures, four significant figures, another four, there's three, there's four, there's four, and then rule of zeros, there's two of these. But that one is between, so those are significant figures, but this is before. So before, between, behind, behind is maybe, before is no, and between is yes. So this is before, so this is two, because those don't count. So then let's add all these up. Um, also, another thing I like to go through is double check to see if I've added all over the problems, and I've definitely done that. And because this is the second time I've been recording this, I have already added everything together. So, our add 330.84 for 4. But you can't accurately say that those last two numbers are there because the one that has this kind of wobbly space out here, um, you don't know if that's now accurate. The best accurate result is based off that least one because hypothetically this could be you know um extra whole bunch of numbers back there and so you don't know but you just don't know so you have to round up to uh this place now because of that one so your final answer what is our final answer our final answer is 330 Point eight on that one because of that. So why aren't, where would you ever encounter this? So there's old recipes and there's solves and stuff that you have to make in the pharmacy. And sometimes when you're making experimental drugs and doing research, which I have had to do, um, there is a lot of stuff that you have to compound yourself and this is basic compounding kind of lists and then if you do um, pharmaceutical history uh, I did medicinal history and so when you look at stuff like um, vena cola which is the original 
um, Coca-Cola recipe, it's written like this. And a lot of the early stuff was written in beer, and it was written in German, and it's written like this. And it's very hard to read, and so you have to kind of translate stuff over. Um, oh yeah, so the original Coca-Cola recipe was actually a ripoff of Vin Marini, Mar Maran Marani, which was a French thing, and then he added cola, which was a nut, which had caffeine, and cocaine, Coca-Cola, and turned it into a wine, and then the prohibition happened. And so he could not uh, market a wine, because everybody didn't take pills before then. Everything was in whiskey. It was, you know, so, or, um, you know, teas. And so for mass production, they changed them to syrups. And there was a pharmacist that accidentally, at the time of Prohibition, a lot of bars were the place where you got your medicines. So with Prohibition, the bars closed and pharmacy split into two different pathways. You either stayed a bartender or you became a pharmacist. And um, those that stayed pharmacists and wanted to be legal in the uppy up, they became soda fountains. Those that became bars got rid of all the medicines because... Well, people didn't come for the medicine, they came for just the alcohol. And so it forced pharmacy to go to the way of pills, and then industrialization happened, and mass production around the 1900s when the prohibition happened. And so they made syrups and pills and stuff, and soda fountains. So they created this Coca-Cola syrup, um, put a ton of sugar in it because sugar is a good way to cover up bitter flavors. That's why children's cough syrups and stuff is full of sugar. And they mixed it with uh, the soda fountain water at the time. And there you have your modern day diabetes candy water. But this is kind of something that you would encounter if you go through um, medicinal history, if you go through making experimentation. So this is actually a significant thing to know. That is the whole point of that story. Um, and it's a huge side trick, but um, it's it's an important thing. Math is important, kids. All right, and I will go on to the next one.